Hey everyone, whether you're watching this at the beginning of a new year or whether this is during the middle of a year, this is an opportunity to learn how to develop life management. And life management is crucial for success because we're consistently getting distracted in this heavily distracted world. And so if you want to reduce procrastination, if you want something that is much more predictable by nature in terms of your success, then this is definitely the video for you. And so I'm going to share my screen so you can learn more about what I'm going to be talking about. Now, again, like I said here, it's really important because we want to be, become more efficient, okay? Whether you're a working professional, a contractor, someone developing your portfolio career, whatever it may be, this is extremely important. Now, most people don't necessarily do this because they end up going down what's known as a busy bandwagon. I remember one time my sports teacher said to me, you know, you're most successful when you're busiest. And at the time when I was 16, 17, 18, I thought that was fantastic advice. I think that advice is rubbish right now. Busy doesn't mean success. It just means you're occupying your space and time with activities. But are those activities turning the needle? Are they allowing you to focus? This is what a life management system allows you to do. So this is something that's really important. Now, here's a quick quote. Okay, I'm going to read this out. Human beings derive meaning and maintain well-being through the organization of time. So this was written by Mayer back in 1922. Now, why am I saying this? There is a clear link between the idea of having routines and systems and having some sort of actionable steps that create a sense of meaning. Let's think about this. If you're trying to achieve something, what do you do? You end up developing some sort of plan and that plan is backed by actions. If you're taking an, a step further, you develop a system in order for you to have ease behind those actions. And so what this person is saying is that you get more meaning when you have repeatable actions on a regular basis that focus towards a purpose or direction. Really important stuff to, to, to try to understand. So let's dive into this in a bit more detail, okay? So what I'm gonna be talking about is the CHASER method. So CHASER stands for something, it's an acronym. This is something that I have come up with and this is something that I've used for the last couple of years, especially in the last three years, in order for me to hit my goals every single year. And I can say that with confidence. So let's move into what CHASER actually means. CHASER stands for choose, highlight, action plan, systemize, evaluate, and repeat. And we're gonna go through each different part of these components so you can get a clearer idea of what this looks like. Now, I want you to think about this before you start getting into this whole chase method. Now, there is this idea that I've developed known as priming, okay? So priming is the ability for you to get into a state, okay? You're trying to get into a mindset that enables you to, again, follow through with this chaser method effectively. So all it is really is asking yourself some questions that enable you to get into this state. So here are some example questions that you may ask yourself. So what are my lessons learned? What are my drivers for success? Who do I want to become? So these are what I call existential questions. These are the sort of questions that get you thinking about, okay, what do I want for my life? This is very linked to life design, okay? so. If there's a certain lifestyle that you're trying to develop, you have to ask yourself these questions. And I would urge you to write this stuff down because if you don't write it down, you don't crystallize the thought, you don't etch the thought into action, you don't really sort of attract or magnetize it into, into its manifestation, into its being. I know this sounds very ethereal and high in the pie sort of stuff, but this is extremely important. You need to write stuff down. Maybe you wanna write it down in your planner. Maybe you wanna write it down in your journal. Maybe you wanna write it down in your notion, okay? Whatever you do, do what's best, okay? So these are some things to think about. So let's move on to the next bit. And just so you know, before we continue, I know I spoke about you know writing it down in your journal and all this kind of stuff there, but for me personally, I write things down in my notion. And I've developed a notion template known as the Life Navigation System. Now this life navigation system is really something that I use myself and other people have used and they've really had great things to say about it. So if this is something that you're interested in and again, you wanna try it for yourself and follow through with this chaser method, then definitely check it out below because again, this is an opportunity for you to just not even try to do it yourself, have something that can do this for you. Now let's get back into the video. Now the first thing, choose, is really choosing your focus. What do I mean by this? Well, again, 
I've developed something. I love to develop things known as the pillars of mastery. Okay, no pun intended because of my business name. But essentially, the pillars of mastery are broken down into four main areas. Okay, these are life areas, so to speak. And these life areas are progress, performance, people, and personal. Why is this important? This is important because it gives you an idea of what specific themes you want in your life and what specific values you want to focus on, okay? So this really reveals the different types of values that you're trying to elicit in your life. Now, of course, you can see with these different areas that there are three sub areas, okay? So for example, with progress, there is business, career, and wealth. Now, these different three different elements are enabling you to understand what you want to purely focus on. So do you want to focus on your business development? Do you want to focus on career development? Do you want to improve your wealth management? What is it that you want to focus on? So this gives you a good idea. Now, the next thing is you need to be able to, again, choose what you want to focus on and then get to a stage where you can rank these different parts of your life. Okay. Now you may want to do all of them. Okay. That may take a long time. But for me personally, my advice is to focus on one thing at least, okay? So maybe you just wanna focus on nutrition management under performance. Maybe you just wanna focus on significant other in the people section. You need to decide what makes sense for you. Now we're quantifying this stuff because it forces us to think about what our current state looks like in that specific area. So for example, if I rate my wealth management out of, let's say for example, seven, I'm saying, yeah, it's good, but it could improve. You have to start thinking about why you've given it a seven. What is making it a seven? What are the challenges? What are the barriers? But also what are the success factors as well? Now, I've spoken about this acronym before, SCHEMES. SCHEMES stands for spaces, cash, helpers, expertise, materials. I think there's equipment and there's also systems. I can't believe I remember that, <laughs> okay? So SCHEMES is a great way of allowing you to remember what are the factors that affect your success and your challenges in your life as well. So think about schemes when it comes to this stuff, okay? So once you've thought about what this life area looks like and you know how you'd rate it out of 10, the next thing you wanna do is move on to the next bit, which is highlight your desired outcomes. So this is really important. We're not talking about goals necessarily, very similar, but you're looking at your desired outcomes. What do you want from life? That's the question. What do you want from life? You need to be able to paint a picture of what you truly want, okay? So really what this looks like is trying to think about, you know, who you are, where you are, what you have, what you do, what you feel. These are all questions that you need to paint because if you understand this, if you can paint that picture, you're more likely to move towards that direction. And we wanna write this down, okay? We wanna write this down vividly and clearly and succinctly in order to crystallize that thinking because again, we use this methodology back in coaching, but there is something called wisdom in hindsight and they do this where you think about what it is that you want to achieve and then you think about it as if you were actually there so that you can work backwards and think about the milestones that got you there. So this is the same approach that we're utilizing as well. So let's keep it moving. Once you've done this and you've painted this picture, you want to start developing what's known as means values or the means value that you want to focus on. So what is a value? A value is the thing that you deem as important, extremely important to you. Values help you make decisions. Values determine your destination. Values determine your destiny, so to speak. It sounds so cheesy, but it's true. But a means value is the mindset, the attitude, the characteristics, the qualities that you utilize in order for you to achieve a specific aim in life. That's what it is. That's what a means value is, okay? We have core values, we have ends values, we have all of this kind of stuff, but these are the things that you need. So for example, if there is a specific value that you're trying to achieve, let's say for example, we use these examples, yeah. Let's say for example, you're trying to improve an area in your life surrounding health. So that's the performance section. And maybe you're focusing on physical fitness. Maybe the sort of means value you need is vitality. You need to have a mindset of vitality, of abundance. Like, how am I making sure that, you know, I'm having the right stuff, whether it's water or vegetables or less carbs or less refined sugars or whatever it may be. If it comes to, let's say, for example, the performance section, maybe you're focusing on business development. Okay, so maybe the value you need is ambition 
What am I gonna, am I gonna do what it takes to get to where I need to get to? Am I gonna do everything in my gift in order to get to that space? Uh, maybe, you know, for example, you want to deepen your relationships or your connections. Maybe you want to improve your relationship with your significant other. So this is the people section. So maybe the value that you want to focus on is authenticity. You want something that is real. You want something that's integral. And you want to make sure that person understands you and you understand them. And so this is what I mean by values. When you have value-based goals or value-based desired outcomes, or whatever it may be, you're doing things in alignment to you as a person. And that's why, that's how motivation becomes easier because you're doing things that are natural to you. And so think to yourself, what is the mean value that I need in order for me to succeed? That, that That's essentially what we're doing. So once we've done that, once we've, just to give you a recap, we've chosen what life area you want from the specific uh, pillar of mastery. We've then highlighted what specific desired outcome we want. Now what we need to do is get to a point where we develop an action plan, okay? So you have to develop some sort of plan that enables you to move forward, okay? So let's move the screen and let's move it forward. So how do you develop an action plan? Well, action plans come in many different forms, okay? They can come in a form of brainstorming, generating ideas from other people, getting inspired through books, courses, programs, utilizing frameworks from this stuff, also using for example, things like AI, such as ChatGPT, it's a fantastic way of generating these ideas, or even the action plan itself. But you need to sit down and, and get these ideas from somewhere in order to think about a logical step in terms of how you're going to tackle these things, okay? Now, in terms of developing the plan, you can sort of like have a project management approach where you essentially develop a schema of works, or you could write down, you know, what the tasks are in chronological order if you want to. But the way I plan is in weeks, okay? And this is what I mean by this. So essentially what I do is I develop initially at least a quarterly high level plan, okay, for the year. Now, it's not necessarily a real plan if I'm honest with you, but essentially it highlights the desired milestones that I want to achieve throughout the next couple of quarters. Now, of course, this assumes that I'm developing a midterm plan in terms of three to 12 months. So this gives you an idea of what I do. The next thing I do is that I develop a loose sort of like 12 week plan. So I only focus on one quarter. So it doesn't have to be on point. It doesn't have to be accurate. It doesn't have to be any of that stuff, but it forces me to think about what do I actually need to do to succeed in the next 12 weeks, week by week, what do I need to do? And then the last thing that I do is week by week, I actually develop the real plan. So based on the information I did on the loose 12 week plan, I will iterate that plan or change it or completely do a new one if it's not relevant anymore because there are gonna be learnings that I develop and adopt through looking at what I've done in terms of my past results and reviewing, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how I do this, okay? So here's a very, very quick recap of what we're doing, okay? So we focused on choose, highlight, and action plan. So essentially what we're doing here, let me make this screen bigger. We are focusing on, again, number one, a specific pillar of mastery. So this could be performance, people, progress, or personal, okay? And we're choosing a focus out of those different areas. So this could be business management or wealth management or career development. Once we've done that, we look at that specific focus and then we rate it out of 10 because we want to force ourselves to think about what does that specific focus look like? So the focus being business development, et cetera, et cetera. And so once we've rated it and we've answered those questions in terms of, okay, what are the challenges? What are the successes, et cetera, et cetera. Then we want to think about what is the means value that is going to get us there? I.e. what is the attitude? What is the mindset? What is the one word that really encapsulate how I need to be in terms of the decisions I make in order for me to achieve my specific desired outcome. So I, I've missed a step. Before we even get to that, we need to think about what we specifically want our desired outcome to be. What does that look like? What does that feel like? What does that really sort of like materialize into? And so we need to start thinking about who you wanna become, how you wanna feel, what you're doing, what you're having, what you're being, all of those different things there. So hopefully that gives you an idea. Okay, so choose, highlight, and then action plan. The next step is developing that plan and sourcing it from different ideas in order for you to have a robust plan, learning from successes and failures as well. 
Hopefully that gives you some idea. Let's keep it moving because we still got a bit to do. So now we've done that, we're moving on to the S of Chaser, which is really focusing on developing a system. We hear this all the time, develop a system, develop a system, develop a system. But what is a system? Well, really and truly, for the everyday person, a system is a set of principles and procedures used to achieve a specific goal. That's what it is. Now, it says here that a system is characterized by the interconnections of its elements, as well as the internal nature of those elements. It has generative power. It produces effects beyond the modes and functionalities of its elements. I read that really weird, but whatever. Okay, This has come from some really smart people who are into this idea and this concept known as systems intelligence which derives from many different sort of aspects of life such as systems thinking positive psychology engineering etc etc and so this is a really ca clear capture in terms of what a system is there are separate elements that make up a whole but separately they're not as good as they are as they're working together and this is an important factor i want you to understand you are one of the most important parts of your system you can't rely on a tool. You can't rely on the routines. It is you, okay? We all talk about how we want to develop habits. Fantastic. But really and truly, if you think about the habit loop when it comes to cues, routines, craving, and rewards, really and truly, the thing that you really need to focus on is those cues and those routines. Develop the right routines. It's not really about the habit itself. It's about being in that routine and developing that sense of, this is what I need to do backed by this purpose. That's what makes a solid system. So think less about habits, think more about routines and think more about how does this work towards your purpose? Really important stuff. Let's keep it moving. So for me, when I develop my system, I'm using these tools. I'm using Notion, Google Calendar, Google Drive. I'm using accountability buddies and I'm using modes of inspiration through books, YouTube podcasts, etc., etc. So Notion is my advanced sort of like organization tool and it holds databases that, databases that enable me to Again, perceive, manage, look at information differently and in a really unique way. I've got my calendar that acts as the reminder for events and activities, and it really triggers those cues that I need to have. Then you've got Google Drive, which really acts as my organization sort of like storage tool. So thinking about it, it's where I host all of my documents, presentations, Excel spreadsheets, all of that kind of stuff there. And then you've got accountability buddy. So I work with someone on a weekly or bi-weekly basis to talk about my successes, my challenges, how I can improve, et cetera, et cetera. And that is rhythmic. That's part of my review process. And then I've also got on a regular basis, I'm using things like YouTube, podcasts, books, programs, courses to again, inspire motivation to trigger a certain way of thinking in order for me to again, be successful in a specific mode or light. So hopefully that gives you an idea of course, you probably do something similar, but it's how you organize this information. Again, I spoke about my life navigation system, which is a fantastic tool to enable you to do this stuff. Now, you may not want to use Notion. You know, previously before in the past, I've used Google Drive and I've used Google Docs to manage this information. I've also used Google Sheets. I've also used Trello before, but some of you may prefer to write things down. So you have to be ultra organized, maybe highlighters and pens and your journal and planner are better when it comes to this stuff there. So just bear all of this stuff in mind, do what makes sense for you. Now, it's very, very important to say, yeah, you can't do all of this stuff and develop this elaborate system, okay, using this chaser method, if you don't track your metrics, it just doesn't make sense, okay? So for example, you know, let's say for example, you are trying to improve your business, okay? What metrics are you tracking? Are you tracking leads? Are you tracking impressions? Are you tracking sales? Are you tracking, you know, all these different things? What are you specifically tracking? If it comes to, let's say, for example, your health, are you tracking your weight? Are you tracking the inches around your belly? Are you tracking your steps? Are you tracking how much calories you're burning? If it comes to relationships, maybe you're tracking it in a different way. Are you tracking how many date nights you're having? Are you tracking maybe how many times you said, I love you? I, I know this sounds a bit crazy, but you need to think of ways to track your results, okay? Maybe you don't wanna do it so, again, superficially when it comes to the more personal stuff, okay? But you need to know that you're improving. Maybe you do this through journaling. That's another way of tracking, okay? So think of creative ways and ideas in order for you to track 
your successes because if you can track your successes and you can add context to that in terms of comments or whatever it may be, then you're winning. Then you have meaning behind your actions because if it's not measured, it doesn't exist. Whether that measurement is qualitative or quantitative by nature. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So the next stage, we're getting closer to the end, is to evaluate success towards your desired outcomes. So what is evaluation? Really, evaluation is to assess or judge a piece of works. You know, I'm talking about reviewing, but if I'm being honest with you, review wasn't enough because I want to focus on measurement. Okay, you need to be able to measure specific things in order for you to know if you're, you're, you're successful. Okay, so these are the sorts of things that you'd be measuring. Outputs for the week. So what tangible things have you actually specifically produced? This is why the weekly review and the weekly cadence is really important. The next thing is, have you remained loyal to that specific means value? So maybe the means value is vitality or ambition or authenticity based on those previous examples. Okay, so really you're writing down how you feel around this stuff. And the final thing is, how have you felt? How have you felt throughout the whole process? Does it feel right? Is something missing? Is there something else that you're not doing? So again, this forces you to think about what you need to focus on. Really important stuff. Focus is follow one course until successful. Next thing, the questions that you wanna ask yourself, and this is really key in terms of the whole evaluation process, is some of this stuff. What were my successes? What did I successfully do? Sometimes we focus on the negative. I'll give you an example. When we go on Amazon, we're trying to fish for something. What do we do? We look at the reviews. And if there's one bad review, you're like, mm -mm, I ain't doing that. <laughs> That's not my portion. I'm going to you know, only get something that has 500 five-star reviews. I mean, that's not going to be possible. You can't please everyone. And so you need to focus on what your successes are. How, how have you been able to successfully do something? Write it down because that will enable you to understand what you need to keep on doing. Okay, this is where intelligent consistency comes into play. The second thing is, what are my challenges? What got in the way? And again, you can use things like schemes to help you here. You can also use SWOT to help you here as well. Well, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Think about those specific things. The next thing you need to think about is, how can I improve? How could I improve? What could I have done better? Looking at your efforts and all of this kind of stuff there, okay? So really focus on what things you could change. And the last thing is, what do I need to focus on? Purely, if we're thinking about the Pareto principle, the 80-20 principle, what is the 20% I need to focus on to get 80% of the reward, so to speak, or vice versa, okay? So think about that stuff because that will enable you to make those specific changes. Now, another thing to think about is, you need to find ways to improve your system. Sometimes we forget that for the evaluation process. We just focus on the goal that we're trying to achieve. But really and truly, if you focus on, you know, how I can improve my specific system, maybe you want to do this on a monthly basis. Maybe you want to do it as and when you think about it. But it allows you to be more efficient as a person. Systems are never perfect. There's always room for improvement. That's why they developed this whole you know, concept of systems thinking to get us thinking about what are the different elements that could improve as part of the whole system. So use the evaluation process E in order for you to, number one, think about how you can improve towards your specific goal or focus, should we say. But number two, think about how you can improve the system so that you can more efficiently work towards your specific goal. So hopefully that gives you an idea. So again, I've put this up here because what makes evaluation magical is the cadence. It is the cadence. There has to be a rhythm. I talk about this. Life is a rhythm. We talk about how we're vibration, energy, X, Y, and Z. And if that's true, there is a certain musical chord that we are playing in order for us to achieve a specific aim. And so with that in mind, what that really means is you need to be able to develop some sort of rhythm that enables you to review effectively. Maybe this looks like a weekly basis. You review on a weekly basis. Maybe you review with your accountability buddy on a bi-weekly basis. Maybe there is some sort of different sort of like four week review or monthly review. And of course, at the end of the 12 weeks, there's gonna be a different type of thing altogether, but we'll talk about that in a second. So think to yourself, what rhythm, what musical tune do I wanna to play to when it comes to developing 
myself towards this specific focus. Really important stuff. Now, the final step is rinse and repeat. Why are we rinse and repeating? Well, again, depending on the type of goal that you've chosen, it's most likely going to be a midterm goal. Okay, so three to 12 months. You want to be able to look back at your 12 weeks because you've been working on a weekly basis and say to yourself, is this what I want to focus on? Is this what I want to keep on doing? Does this make sense anymore? You know, do I need to change the value? Do I need to change the desired outcome? Have I achieved or hit what I want to do? Because thinking about this stuff enables you to reassess life. And this is why I don't just focus on, you know, annual goals. It happens every 12 weeks or every three months or every 90 days, however you want to look at it. But weekly makes it manageable. Weekly gives you enough information to plan ahead, but make the tweaks that you need to make. Monthly is a bit too late in my opinion, but again, it, it totally depends on you. But giving yourself 12 weeks allows you to look back and say, hey, did I really give this a shot? Is there anything I need to change or do I need to continue this? So think about this carefully. The 12 weeks is very important, but it relies on you to be consistent. And you're only as consistent as the system that you develop. That includes your motivation. That includes the people who are helping you, whether these are accountability by these coaches, therapists, mentors, trainers, etc., etc. This comes down to the tools that you may use. This comes down to understanding yourself better and knowing what value you want to focus on. So these are all things to consider. Now, of course, I think my system is a great way of helping you develop this chaser method in order for you to be more effective. So again, if there's something that you're interested in, then make sure you click the link in the description below in order for you to get it for yourself and start utilizing this for yourself. Okay. And of course, this template is updated every single time my system changes. And again, you can access it for yourself. So really to summarize these different points, okay, to really get into it is number one, choose your focus based on your life areas. Number two, highlight your desired outcomes and create your goal, okay? That's really what the desired outcome is, what you're really trying to achieve. Number three, develop an action plan, okay? Do this based on research, brainstorming, chat GPT, whatever it may be. And really think about the tools that will help you organize your thinking. Number four, create an intelligent system. So you're developing a system that allows you to be efficient towards that specific pursuit. Number five, evaluate success. Okay, so you want to do this on a rhythmic basis, weekly or bi-weekly. Okay, you may want to do this just by yourself or with your accountability buddy and or coach, whatever makes sense to you. And number six, repeat the process after 12 weeks and you can either adapt the goal or create a new one or add another one if you're ambitious by nature. So hopefully that gives you a clear idea of what you need to be focusing on. Now, again, if you are interested in really learning more about this kind of stuff, if you're interested in positive psychology, if you're interested in life management, and if you're interested in portfolio careers, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And as always, my friends, understand, reach and expand. Peace.